very well for Weibo in the past when, especially in game number one, Xiaohu was able to put so much pressure on crying. They are going to lock this one in with a lot of flexibility available. Exactly. I, I love it because it not only plays to that whole like map control, focusing on, on turrets and neutrals style that Wave like to do, but it's also the champion that does that that also pretty much guarantees you prio. So I like that they actually shift the focus to this. And IG saying they don't actually care about that Cassante. Why is game going to feel just fine on the rec side and the strength? that it could bring early again could set up Weibo for potentially trying to match with the new deer and just having another tank themselves and having prio top uh for their side but ig here the varus that Weibo are thinking about is open why is cam's rex i felt nigh unkillable last time around there was a reason it got banned immediately the next game is here available is locked in for crying i do gotta say though in that game with the rex it felt more of like you know, that was the comp where Weibo didn't really have great ways of playing into what IG had. So I don't think that Weibo should should really look at that game and be like, hey, Rex has a problem. Uh, so I, I like that they're fine giving it through. Like you said, Crying though, going to go on the Azir. This champion was what was leading IG to success early on. They were definitely one of the teams that were hurt by the global ban of it on 14.5. And now we're going to get to see if he can put up a better performance than he did earlier on. Again, he did have a... Did have the flub of the ult. <laughs> Don't worry game about two. it. Don't worry about it. Ex exactly. There's always time to show up once again hey. in Weibo. Double double marksman, Mazel. I love it's it. It's a one game series. It's a best of one here on out True. for your spot in uh, continuation of our playoffs. I think the poke Varus was an interesting choice last time around for light. I could see the advantage of it, but the sustained damage or the lack thereof was uh, definitely felt as time went on. I love that Crisp is back on Engage and back on this Rakan. Yeah, I don't I, again, I don't necessarily feel like Crisp needs to be on Engage, but I like to see Crisp on Comfort. Getting on his most played champion of the split feels like a great bounce back from, from last game. Again, a champion he hadn't played all split long. So having a lot of, like now they have things that we weren't seeing in the last game. So they're having like concrete engage concrete cc coming out from the recon they're having prio and, and dps coming out from both mid and ad carry ig though looking and gonna dip back into the lee sin it's something i'm incredibly excited for especially with how aggressive he's been being has played it twice this split and both were wins so uh a lot of potential aggression for looking to sit up around bot lane once again and I go back to the the major factor why it, it felt so dominant from Weibo in those first two games is there wasn't pressure being put on Xiao Hao. These last couple games, there's been tons of pressure going his way, and I think that's going to continue here. We'll see what he grabs as a little bit of comfort his way, potentially. The Udir immediately banned against ZDZ because he could be just as no annoying as YSKM's Rek'Sai. The Lucian ban to try to take away some of that 2v2 aggression that we know On and Wink are looking for. The big thing I want to see here, though, are they going to ban away the Blitzcrank? Yeah, that'll be interesting. I don't really see much of a reason to do it. Like, sure, you have an immobile AD carry, but Rakan's going to be completely fine. Can play far forward in lane and always just E away. And then having your other carry so far being mobile in the Tristana. I like the Cassante ban because... I think for Weibo, the best thing into the Rek'Sai side would just be Cassante or Udyr. Like, just matching yeah. the tank for tank again. Udyr, in my mind, would be ideal because of the prio he can give you. But now you're going to be forced once again into potentially, I, I guess, just the Aatrox for Weibo. And we saw last time around that wasn't able to have a great deal of threat. Kalista now being highlighted. Uh, I mean, really, only that or the Zion with Rakan being taken off the table. Maybe just going towards Kalista plus either Renata or if they have another tank in mind. Uh, would be solid for on and wink to keep up that 2v2 <laughs> i like it again I, I always like to highlight some of the core pieces that these teams have been building around and uh on and wink are that now for ig you can say ysKM as well has been leaning into that Lien back <laughs> i feel like as uh, being a core development piece of the past of ig's success but it, it really feels like on and wink have become the the faces of ig yeah, at, at least, you know, like the combined on and wink and then Lil Yen. It's like the, the bot lane and, and Lil Yen really being uh, what defines this team right now is actually Sejuani going to be what comes through. And like I said, with the other bands taken out, Aatrox really being the only thing that stands out to me. Uh, they're hovering these other picks, but I 
theoretically you want right the melee to be able to chain together with that Sejuani passive. But once again, I like that they have the Sejuani. I like that they're they're getting more engaged. They're getting more CC. Uh, when when last game we had so many of these scrappy five v fives. That's what I'm hoping for for a game five five and five on fives. Right, it all goes together. Right, another game of Ons Draven. Look at that smile. He knows comfort is king when it comes to the brass tacks of a game five. I mean, yeah. Comfort is king. It, this, if IG do win though, LNG are gonna have a really good idea about what they could ban in that next series. Like, <laughs> Does hey. it start with a D and end yeah. with a Ven? <laughs> exactly. So, uh, a lot like still some aggression for IG to play around. They should be able to maintain Pryo top bot. They'll be able to look for as well, especially if Leyen keeps playing as heavily around bot as he's been so far. And you wouldn't really expect any reason for IG to change it up, especially with their draft. Right, you have Rexai who's gonna be fine sitting up top side in that 1v1. Rek'Sai proved the point of power last time as a strong front line, but this series has delivered every step of the way. Weibo had such strong strengths in the first two games. They dominated the map, but IG turned the tide with Loyen coming in and leading from the front. His Nidalee started a wave that has led to a potential reverse sweep. Loser goes home, winner goes on to LNG. It's IG's first time back in playoffs for over a thousand days. It would be their first series win since they won the LPL almost five years ago. It's a game five that nobody expected, but it's a game five we all welcome. Weibo have been pushed to the brink. Can IG bring it home? Let's hear those tiles ring one more time for our first five game series here in the spring playoffs. What a world, what a world, Lyric. As we get down to it, no spicy level ones this time. Maybe a little reservation coming out in a game five. I gotta say, like, I've I've been swayed. Uh earlier, earlier in the day, you know, Nymera pointed out the Maokai thing after the first loss, and I thought, no way. No way is this true. But twice in a row, I might be on board with no tree equal sad face. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> We're gonna find I mean, Honestly, results-based analysis Look, will know the exact answer after this. There will be no other questions. Mazel, in Game 5, you throw out logic. You throw out any uh -huh. analysis or anything about League of Legends, and it all comes down to the vibes and the simple answers. Now, you know, to actually focus us in the game a little bit, right? Light is going to go the on-hit uh, route this time around, or at least bring more aggression in that bot lane with the Hail of Blades. But I'm curious to see... It's not the lethal tempo, though. Yeah, true. Yeah, true. So w wanting to go with more of that bot lane uh, aggression. I think trying to outmatch range, though, even... Oh, lights. I think trying to, right there. trying to outmatch range might be a little rough when you index so much of your comp into all-in. Like, sure, the Azir's going to outrange you on the opposite side, but they do have a Renata, too. So, yeah. Weibo, like, how Weibo want to play into IG is going to be a little bit awkward because IG have ways to peel off play defensive that's going to want to set up for the poke to come out from light but the whole rest of your comps all set about jumping in finding the assassination and getting on the back line both junglers starting on top side of the map headed down towards bot no doubt this is where all the focus is going to be and we already see some of the strength of the pathing coming out from Xiao Hao. actually interesting here a back from Layen. gonna go for that and head straight down to his bot lane We'll see if they can find much. IG doing a great job of keeping the Pryo now. I mean, right, we don't expect Light to be able to come online until that first serrated Dirk really comes through anyway. And Weibo with their draft once again are kind of angling more to just play through push, play through hitting those turret plates. But IG actually going to be the ones to start us off with that in this 2v2. I feel like actually, I mean, Shadow's already going to be done with his clear uh, pretty soon, so he'll be able to... Maybe be the first one to respond down here to the bot side. I do believe that also showed a little tag of YSKM's 100th game in the LPL. 
Uh, would be really cool if that's it, but uh, congratulations if it is. If it's not, I'm sorry. And I do see now a wrap around from Shaohao coming towards this scuttle crap. So he's going to try to use this level four to potentially get something going. Both junglers might run into one another. No, Shaohao just going to go straight to play first. Okay. Crying just going to shifting sands his way out. And. Lien taking the back end of that one. We'll take the Scuttle Crab on bot side, but we trade it off with the other one on top side. Yeah, it seems like Shao knowing exactly what was going to happen around that bot lane and, and hoping to just make the play and then go for the cross. Might even be able to steal away these Raptors. I'm oh, actually going to look for the play on mid still, this probably. This is actually huge. Okay, Lien going to go in for it. Shao rebuffs him. We'll stop the invade that Xiao Hao was trying to go for. And this has been some chess game being played in a game five that's of utmost importance. They're not going to be able to find it, but still doesn't send him back at all, right? Both junglers uh, going on to their next camp at the same time. And the name of the game is still just about the pressure being put up in the 2v2. A little bit of engage on bot side. That's why Crisp on the Rakan can be so lethal but he also has a lot of roam ability on this pick we'll see if he can actually get out of lane when on and wink are just pressing him in so much a big wave crashing on YSKM up here even though Leyen is there he will just complete his back we have objectives coming up now though Lyric yeah Pryo and top for ZDZ so you can see pinks coming out for Weibo now to already start making their way onto the grubs it is going to be spotted so Leyen doesn't look like he's going to readjust his path is going to head down to bot side. And right, if the opportunity to to dive or go for the gank is there, you go for it. And if not, you can always peel away and look for Drake. IG are going to want to find heavy trades, though, if they were looking to set up any sort of dive or player on bot, which doesn't look like it's in the cards. Light doesn't have much mana. The dragon going to be pulled out of its cove. And Lian going to start that one up with the movement up from On and Wink. The Telegrubbies have been watched. What do you what do you think that uh, Shaha learned? Is it is it a, a lesson in patience, resilience, pathing? I think I think Xiao Hao probably learned nothing and is focused on hey, when is it time to fight? How do we win this game? <laughs> well, he's gonna have to find the answer for that because he's gonna be a main key to the engage for Weibo. So on a pick that has a lot of that quick decision making into a composition where if On gets caught, Crying gets caught. A lot of that damage is going to be sucked out of the composition of IG. I think this time around, though, Weibo are set up a lot nicer to be able to just hit frontline. I mean, Weibo will be tanky, right? Having Sejuani Aatrox as compared to Rek'Sai Lee Sin. Uh, but again, the disengage, some of the range there can be the hindrance. Shaohao's hovering over here. Does not have level 6. Shaohu healing up. Was on a bit of a roam. Nothing else going to come here, and they're just going to try to crash this wave as best as possible. And, and I like this, right? Because you think about the past two games, and a lot of the things coming to bite Weibo has been the aggression in the 2v2 and 3v3s around bots. Is crying. Pushing them back. The Emperor's Divide. Oh, actually, Light's Recall getting stopped. Yep, Observer's great job of catching it to make sure that... He isn't going to be able to go for this. Look at oh, six. Oh, man. Yeah, he is. If Light steps out a little bit too far, ooh, Lian not going to be able to connect there. Crisp on his way here, so Light should be a little bit more safe. Crying will spot out Chow Hao up here on the uh, Chicky Nuggies. He'll heal a decent amount from that, too. They actually could look for the dive in between turrets here, but they're just looking for plates for Chow oh, Look, Look at the minimap. They're also zoning off the Weibo bot lane still, so they're wow. only furthering this lead. For the IG bot lane, and okay, looks like Shaohao's finally going to start reacting and moving down now. Isn't going to go for any more counter jungling in that top side. But a big win condition in that back. game number one was Shaohu on the Tristana. Oh that was God. the big Ooh. difference maker. They missed the combo there. They're going to try to flash forward. Explosive charge. Buster shot. No way. He just made it out with 20 health. Cry and staves off his old mentor. And now Leyen forces the rocket jump out of him. That's one of those plays where you just have to say unlucky. I do got to say I was a bit puzzled by Xiaohao Slash uh, trying to follow that one through, but Xiaohu going for it, trying to find that kill. It was so close. Again, though, does end it off getting weeded off in the end. 
Oh, and th okay. <laughs> For a second there, Light actually bought double serrated Dirk. Ended up selling <laughs> one. Uh, and we're going to see here again. Ult doesn't connect. Shao mm. Hao flashing forward. It seemed like it was going to try to tank that first tower shot. He was trying to get the foil shot. or something. Yeah. yeah maybe the, the tower shot. Maybe both, right? Because he did try to go for the flail. He did tank the first one and hold it for a second. But sadly, Shahu not having that damage. We can see now Light readjusting his buy. One serrated dirt, also having the tier and long sword off of it. So he's really going to be on his own uh, this game. Unless, again, Weibo do opt to play front to back, which I think they, they could with how mm -hmm. these comps are, are set up. But last game, we didn't see them really opt for that. Shahu was always trying to jump right in the middle of the fights. And a lot of the times, it, it ended up biting him. I do wonder about movement around the map right now, though, because uh, Layen is on his bot side, has that entire side to clear, but we do have the next Telegrubbies coming up. On's going for the aggression on the light, and I love the assertion of dominance right there. Almost getting it. Yeah, trade. I mean, you traded a flash for a cleanse, right? You love that as the IG duo lane. And now it's a bit of an awkward position, right? Where light's coming back, you feel like as Weibo, you have to you have to defend to protect your bot lane a little bit. But second spawn of Grubs has come up, and that could be you know the potential five six Grubs for Weibo. Would be really big too uh, with their composition with Xiaohu, and not only that, but the way we've set them up to play through side lanes. Uh, we haven't actually seen a lot of focus on the Grubs. A lot of times we haven't even made it to five uh, for either side. So. Yeah, I don't in think we have. I don't think we have at all this series, yeah. right? And we've had a lot where it's just like two or three get taken. The second spawn never even goes. So uh, it's been a lack of prio here. But maybe in a final game, Weibo can utilize that as a bit of an insurance policy. I do think that the decision of, of defending your bot lane is the right call, especially because IG have shown that they don't need to care about that. They'll just go to redive or kill Light now that he doesn't have Flash. So I think Weibo staying cautious. For IG, maybe the second you see Sejuani cross up towards that top side or go on or go on Grubs is when the play comes through because look at the mini map. Uh, Lugan is still bot. He's just waiting, just hunting, just waiting, and he's gonna wait a little bit longer while uh, six Grubs go to Weibo. And I like this. This is the time to recall. You just pushed out the lane. You know your jungle mid or top side, so. They expect Lil Yen to be bot, even just showed. So pinging him out right now. And we are playing this very conservatively. We'll open up IG, though, to get the second dragon of the game. Are we going to get another Chemtech Soul? <laughs> We've had, what, two or three <laughs> of those already? You're willing it into existence right now, my friend. I'm not, I'm not willing it. Yeah, it's been you happening. are. It's been happening. We've had two or three of them. What's it going to be? Haha, it's a Mountain Dragon Soul. I Actually, love that. Actually, even more pivotal, I feel like. And it'd be great against both teams, right? When you when you have Lethality Varus on one side and something like a Draven on, on the opposite. And, you know, sure, we'll get Lord Dominic's coming out from Draven later, so we will be able to hit those tanks. But Sejuani, Aatrox, really going to be able to take advantage. Especially for Weibo, who haven't taken a Drake yet. If they can just start stacking up from from one, from Mountain Drakes only, it would be huge. I will also say Ooh, that 300 uh, stacks. IG, yeah, it's something IG did well uh, the last couple times with Draven is kind of facilitate stacks, facilitate ganks down there. It's been a very quiet early game, and those stacks are starting to stack up here. As On needs to get a trade in and a cash in, he does have the Essence Reaver now as he comes out of base. Oh, look, he's going to find ZDZ. Just immediately kicked into the Wombo combo there. ZDZ is still pretty healthy and looking to trade back with those Q sweet spots. Not having enough damage to be able to take him down. In the end, they have to back off because they do not know where Xiao Hao is. With ZDZ queuing forward like that, you know, Xiao could have been waiting in the wings. So, like, the respect paid is oh. the corruption. Actually came out bot, but nothing really coming from it. It's a really good timing from... Uh... Mr. On there with the stand aside. Honestly, uh, being able to kind of deny Crisp's engage with the grand entrance, always going to be clutch. But I, I want to harken back to that first game, to that situation that Weibo utilized a double marksman composition so well. It was with the Zeri for light, so a little bit different. But it was primarily Xiaohu that led the charge with a lot of that. And uh, moving him to get plates and side lanes to break down outer turrets, I think is something to keep an eye out on for Weibo. He's going to be the big pivotal member with, with the fact that, again, Light being on the Lethality Varus, we saw in last game, wasn't really able to keep up. And sure, he's going to get some poke down, but 
you have movement speed on 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 to be able to run around dodges abilities crying very mobile there isn't going to be a whole ton of targets in these standoffs or at least easy targets as Shao Hao has his ult Boar is hungry. Oh, he's found on. That's a cleanse immediately. About half on's health down. Oh, trying to get Lien to play. Is it going to oh. flash for it? Here comes the, the quickness and that grand entrance, too. They don't get him with the whirling death in the end because Chris dodges out. A lot of summoner spells used across the board. Yeah, I, I love the idea and the angle from Chris hiding in that brush, dodges out on the Renata ult, but maybe a bit too soon uh light and shao really not able to follow him forward and the quickness actually not even connecting onto on just because of the amount of damage he was already putting out onto crisp leading up to that but you could probably look at this as a bit of a win for weibo that draven still hasn't found a kill but my god when he does those stacks are going to slap oh yeah and they're gonna fill his pockets with a lot of gold you see lien really wanted to play but light actually making the heads up flashpoint i i think the second half of this fight just looks so overforced from both teams like there was there should have been no world where you were going to find a kill on the light there especially with somehow being in the way being able to body block and then again i, I could see how crisp's angle looks good but uh again the other two not really being close enough to to follow up with any tangible damage but looks like we might be leading to a scrap now. We'll see if Weibo actually want to contest anything here. Xiao doesn't have his ult, which feels like a pretty big thing for the Sejuani. Everyone's got first items. Ooh, a little stoppage down here. Why is KM trying to take down Xiaohu, though? The Kraken Slayer going to be doing some work right back into him. And be a little bit careful for Xiaohu in the side lane, but the Rift Herald could be the next play for Weibo. Yeah, Xiao has to be careful. He needs to remember if he takes... If he gets a bit lower, that ult's going to come through. And sure, he has his own ult, but cannot underestimate this Rek'Sai damage. And look at why he's came on the minimap. He's actually following him around and canceling his recalls. <laughs> the Prey Seeker, pretty nice for that fact. A lot of poke coming out from Light onto On, but IG will turn onto the Rift Herald. Okay, we see if the TP comes out from Tristan, and it does. Shahu's trying to come in. Glacial Prison's already been used. Xiao Hao gonna get scooped right back into Death's Embrace. And there you go. One kill already. That's first blood of past 15 minutes. Now more afterwards. Layan trying to fight his way in. And ZDZ trying to fight his way out. But it'll be YSKM that claims his life. Four for one. And honestly, huge for IG. Weibo, I mean, Xiao Hao really getting caught out there. No one around to help him out, especially super distinct with where ZDZ is on the map. And now it's gonna open up IG, not to take the Herald, but actually to pivot themselves down for a 16 minute soul point. That's insane. IG, man, what a story in this series alone. They, again, they were a team that came in without winning a single game in four series into the playoffs and here they are going toe to toe with Weibo in the early game and Weibo really collapsing I mean again Xiao going in light zoned off ZDZ still making his way down Xiao TP gets in there after he dies like they pretty much just ran in one by one giving IG the perfect setup and again I'm not really loving this lethality Varus uh we, we aren't really seeing Light find an impact in these early fights. We'll see if he'll be able to find something later and, and be able to play around the fact of, of that range from Kryon, but not off to a great start. I'm a fan of Light when he's on sustained damage dealers. i obviously not going to rebuff his attempts on a Lethality Varus, but the the difference we I saw will. when he's on Zeri and he's on these this Lethality Varus is night and day, and that's not just because his name is Light. As Xiaohu is going to need to get out of that one with the rocket jump. IG have collapsed. They will also be able to take a lot of pressure from this and move it around the map. Yeah, we're going to see what they end up going for. Uh, obviously still having mid and top outer turrets to play around, but you have, you have good wave clear, right? Having the Shoshana who's going to be able to play around here. Varus can do fine in that mid lane. I guess we can see if Weibo wants to set up any sort of trap plays. You know, like maybe Chris waiting in, uh, inside Raptors and then like you let on an IG push up and you try to find that angle to engage. So I think plays like that 
are probably what IG, uh, Weibo should be leaning into for now with, with IG having so much control. And I just want to open up the conversation a little bit. Like, is it literally just a Lien difference? Or, or was no. it just a play style difference that they wanted to adapt to after game number two? Honestly, I feel like we're seeing more... Like, I feel like the shift feels more on the Weibo side than it really yeah. does on IGs. Uh, again, some uh, the way they're just taking some of these fights is... is <laughs> not good, honestly. Perplexing. Coming out from Weibo. Yeah. Uh, there, there's the PG way of putting it. Not the PG, the broadcast <laughs> way of putting it. Uh, not seeing them be able to take advantage of their strengths. Oh, oh, oh ZDZ! Oh, my God! The sh moves on this man. He still gets the kill, and he goes back to Deja Vu, and we saw him on Rumble. Yeah, great play coming out from ZDZ in the 1v1. So it's going to lead into a turret for them. We'll see. No capitalization able to come out from IG on the opposite side of the map. So it's just going to be kind of pure profit for Weibo. But it doesn't seem like that's going to put a dent in anything for IG as Scam finishes off his Thornmail. I think we're still obviously waiting for a big cash in for on on the Draven. But the fact that other parts of IG have still been able to stay consistent is huge. This consistently is going to be an insane play from ZDZ. What a dodge out on the ultimate. Yeah. Connects with the chains, too, to be able to, to guarantee the damage that's finishing it off with an auto. Really nice from ZDZ again. Uh, I guess regardless of Weibo's performance as a whole, this series might be ZDZ's best performance all split. Well, it, at least for the first two games, Xiaohao was really showing up, too. The, the Maokai presence he had was insane. And these are the two pickups from... Anyone's legend, right? Like these these are two new faces for Weibo who have come in and took a little bit to really find their stride within this team of big names in the LPL. Yeah, both both coming in, both having good performances now. Dragon a minute away. IG gonna start trying to not even trying, I mean hell, they already have cemented the version control over bot side, which is making sure it goes even further with that scuttle crab. They do have uh, a little bit of vision clearing to have cleared up here, I feel like, as it's been consistent that IG just throw a ton of vision around the dragon bit so far. And uh, with about 40 seconds till that soul, you'd expect to go back down there. Now, Collector has been completed for On. That's a big item completion in the damage department. We'll be matched with Light picking up his opportunity. Now, Navori for Xiaohu. So the damage, at least, is there. Poor Weibo side. I mean, the only fight we've seen them lose so far, again, wasn't even really much of a fight with how disorganized it was, as we get to see how on ended up losing some of those summoners. Feels like we're on the cusp of IG getting a big snowball advantage. They've got to get one more dragon. TP in the mid lane from YSKM. IG are going to have to move there, but Weibo are already in point try and find their way in a lot gonna be on Loyen. it's already burning down here Loyen may be going for the 50 50 Xiao has been pushed out of the right side of the pit they're in there glacial prison on to cry and big emperor's divide but it's gonna go wide Chris trying to get on the other side but you gotta look at the dragon the dragon is the important part but Loyen can't keep up the fight Loyen's no longer there odds gonna go down to CDC's finding backline access all day and here comes Weipo. They want more. Q Sweet Spot. Shao Hao finds him. Buster Shot not going to be enough. And here comes the fight. He finds the rocket jump anyways. And four members of IG fall. It's how tragic for IG. They were, I mean, Lu Yen trying to focus on the dragon, trying to focus on getting them soul. Ends up to giving Weibo the winning fight and now turning this into a Baron. So much pushing power with this Tristan. It's going to be massive. I wonder if Wink tries to go for anything cheeky. I don't know if we're not a Q or for anything can end up stealing there, but he's going to go for it. He is. He doesn't end up getting it. Weibo secure that one. I will also say On was able to get a kill there for himself. We'll take a look back at the replay. So we're going to see Shao start this one off by Olden Krine, and it looks like he was thinking about going in. But Weibo quickly realized, wait, we need to turn onto this Lee Sin, focus him down, while Crisp and ZDZ play spoiler. Huge, and again, I, I I can't talk up ZDZ enough because I, I think for most people, he would be called the weakest link on this roster. Player's been very criticized 
uh, over many splits in the LPL. And to step up here in playoffs is huge, as we're going to see Xiaohu be able to finish that one off. But great fight from Weibo all around. And a mini redemption of itself. The last time YS came and had Rek'Sai, it just felt like ZDZ wasn't able to answer on the Aatrox. This time around, much different position there. He's almost on his third item as well. Some really big spikes going to be coming up for Weibo, and they do wrestle control of the game away from IG. And now, like we said, with the pushing power, with the Tristana, they're going to be able to do a lot, especially now that ZDZ is a handful they have to deal with. Weibo trying to get themselves into a match against LNG. Again, the team that thwarted them in summer playoffs <laughs> took them to five games, uh, which was impressive. They want to make a go at them once again, and they're on their way to doing so. But you also have to remember on IG's side, over a thousand days since they've even been here, but also almost five years since they've won a series. They're on the cusp of a reverse sweep over Weibo, a team that we just saw in the finals of Worlds. We know they have a retooled roster. Major pieces are still on this team. We see them reset. We see the dust clear. We still have a lead for Weibo. And I think regardless of what team wins, right, Ellen's just going to have a lot of data of, of what works for these sides. For IG, again, they, they keep going back to this Draven. For Weibo, recircling around to the Tristana and seeing how important this is for Xiaohu and how important this is for Weibo overall. Now we're going to see them start making their way in this topside jungle, setting up vision and looking for these picks. Even already having the wave starting to make its way up here with ZDZ. I wonder how long he's going to wait up here to see. Okay, <laughs> he's just hanging out on his uh, control ward there. You know, the crazy thing is, right? Had Xiao Hao just decided to check that brush and just assume, like, I don't care if anyone else is in there. That could have been summoners from Lien. And honestly, every domino matters at this point. Now the six grubs going to be coming in clutch here. They go in onto YSKM. He's going to heal a lot, and he's very tanky as he has so much armor. You look at his build. My goodness. Again, we're not going to see Light doing anything to him, but I feel like what we can see from how Weibo are utilizing Light right now is he's just, his job is push minions. Go mid, you push mid, you rotate up, and you know, if you get here in time for a skirmish, yeah, your, your ult's going to help us out, but <laughs> it seems like they're really not Is that not where you want Light, light though? Plan. No, no, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm going to be honest, I hate it. I hate it. After this, give him crit marksman, give him on hit marksman, give him, give him things that can take over games. Because, uh, yeah, we, we are not seeing that here or last game. And that's where Light has found his strengths, those big game team fights. And here he is against On, who has really stepped up in this series. Now on three items, his own right. Lord Dom's completed there. Going to be doing a lot of work. It's going to be a tight-knit fight. 40 seconds for a dragon would be soul. A mountain at that for IG. We're going to see if they can find a way into River. Luckily, there's this timing where a lot of resets are coming out for Weibo, so IG going to start making their way up mid. The problem is they don't, they still don't know where Weibo's members are, right? So they're going to see this TP down bot now. They're going to have an idea of where Xiaohu is, but still needing to be cautious, especially now that the Lord Dominic's finished up for Xiaohu himself. I should just burn this uh, outer tower here. They're not going to step up for it because Crisp was coming around the angle. They realize there's a lot of bodies missing, but ZDZ taking a tier 2 tower in the bot side now. And, and right, this this brings us more back to like what we expect from Weibo, being able to, to pull a team apart around the map, play the map very wide, and look for their options. IG, luckily, at least the fact that they got all those drakes so early does give them the insurance of like, hey, we, we can let Weibo take these. We can just try to get to our next power spikes and look to fight later. But I don't really think it gets much easier. Especially if Xiao Hao can do a good job you playing this frontline role, really doing a, a nice job with these ultis. A lot of targets on the side of IG. Just got a Shreldia's Grudge completed for light. IG are on the prowl right now. They do have a lot of counter engage available to them. They have TPs available. There is a Baron up in about 45 seconds. Maybe we're going to try to get some vision around this, though. Because it's the only objective that's up right now. And a double marksman comp takes that real fast. And we've seen, I mean, hell, we've seen even even in the last game, right? Weibo rushed it out of nowhere. 
Ended up losing two, but they did get the Baron. So right now, feeling the need to go for it. But look at Shahu. Still not showing on the map. So IG maybe have to be a little bit dicey. I guess he should be shown on the sword. Uh, taking blue buff away. Could be the opportunity. His side lane pressure is very difficult to deal with. As you leave him alone there, he'll burst down your turrets, especially with the six grubs. Weibo just playing here in the mid lane, forcing IG to stick around and not be able to answer the way they want to. And you can tell for IG, they know it's, just, it's gonna be so hard for they them to be able to it. find an angle. You're gonna need Lil Yen to find a timing to come off around and Azir or Renata really just peeling as Weibo come into you. But there it is, the speed of that Baron. They don't have any wards in there. They do end up getting one. Back to the pit. Lil Yen looking for a 50-50. I don't think that's something that Weibo want. They are still burning it down. They need to decide if they want to stop it. Crisp has a flank. Oh, look at this flank. The monster. He's a world champion for a reason. And he might just guarantee Weibo their spot. As they're moving in, ZDZ. He finds the back line. And here comes Recess. Oh my gosh. Show -hoo! He fakes them out. You look left. He hits you with the right. And Weibo are going to dominate IG. And Weibo take it slowly. Crisp setting it up. But especially ZDZ being the only one to be able to follow through and find that backline was massive for Weibo. What a world. Weibo, they push one more time and they break apart the armor of IG. They were pushed to the cusp, but they won't fall to a reverse sweep. And revenge is in their eyes against LNG as they will eliminate Invictus Gaming. The results just feel strange now because uh, Weibo started off so strong, uh, fell asleep for two games, and then their, their team fighting especially just got so much better in the final game of this series. What a way to finish it off, and props to IG for even bringing it the distance like this and uh, putting us to a game five, our first of this spring split, but I'm sure not our last. Weibo, they're going to be happy to have scooped by with this one, though. Yeah, I mean, Weibo, I mean, a win is a win, right? You're going to have a lot of footage to take away and learn from, especially in that, that third and fourth game, right? Hell, even something to take away from this game. I mean, you, you think back to that earlier fight topside where Xiao Hao gets caught and then, you know, ZDZ goes in and then someone else goes in. and So I think a lot for 